almost made it all the way through, almost made it all the way through the worship service without knocking one piece of equipment over, came so close, so close. Well, again, I'm Pastor Bob Miller. We got a little ring in the house here. Let's see here. Yeah, I know the guys are working on it. And again, let me add my welcome to all of you here. Um, those of you who are worshiping with us in person, uh, those of you who are joining us on our uh, live stream, and also those of you who will be joining us, you're watching this sometime later uh, in the week. Uh, today, we, we continue our series that we are calling This is Church. And, and just like we are taking a, a fresh look as to, as to what life should look like following the, uh, the coronavirus pandemic, this is a perfect time to be uh, also taking a look at what church life should look like and, and how we may more authentically and, and more deeply and more powerfully experience and foster Christ's presence in the Holy Spirit in our own personal lives and in the lives of our families and, and in the world. We've been leaning on the New Testament book of Acts for this look that we've been on as Acts speaks to the, the accomplishments, the trials, the, the struggles, the learnings of the, the early Christian church. A couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that the book of Acts is also many times called Acts of the Apostles. And, and being Christians, our heads Oftentimes, when we hear the, the apostles, we, we go to those 12, right? The, the 12 that Jesus named to, to uh, organize the church and spread the message of his teachings. But actually, it dropped to 12 when Judas betrayed Jesus. But then it went back up to, or it dropped to 11 when Judas betrayed. It went back up to 12 when Matthias replaced Judas. Um, you can also find that in Acts, by the way. Anyway, while Acts does present a number of detailed actions involving the Twelve, and especially those of, of Peter and the Apostle Paul, who, who comes later, whose, I guess, addition would probably make 13, but that's not important. What is important is while Acts presents actions of those apostles, it also contains the ac actions of many more disciples who made noteworthy and key contributions to, to the growth, the expansion of the early church. And, and this is not to reduce the substance or, or, or the importance of the acts of, of, the, of the 12 or, or Peter and Paul, but, but we would be remiss if our takeaway from reading Acts was, was that the early church was the result of only those two or those 12 or 13 so named apostles. For sure, their leadership was crucial in getting the church started, as well as overcoming early obstacles that the, that the church would overcome. But for, also for sure, the early gathering and growth of Christian believers required more than the effort of just a handful of charismatic leaders that seemed to always know what to say or, or could do miraculous healings. For the early church to take root and then expand to, to become today's largest faith required the contributions of many more dedicated and faithful believers. And, and here's a, a really big takeaway that I believe may be most pertinent for us today. Most of those contributors, both in the, the early first century church and, and ever since, were and are regular folk. For sure, so, some were so notable in how they used the gifts that God gave them and, and, and in their accomplishments that they are specifically named, like the apostles. But I submit that the innumerable, seemingly imperceptible contributions made by the countless other folk were every bit as crucial and necessary for the forward movement of the church. And, and that's no matter if whether or not the contributor knew at the time 
the role that he or she was playing. And so why is it important for us today? Why is all that important? Well, well, because we, all of us, are part of those regular folk. And while our actions or contributions may seem imperceptible or insignificant in the big picture, they are anything but. It's like a, it's like a dam made out of bricks or, or cement blocks or, or, a, or an archway for that matter. Our, our initial attention may be directed at the, um, at, at the most prominent features or, or the enormity of the big picture. But upon closer inspection, which brick or block is okay to remove? Or to, is it okay to not even have? None. They all contribute to the strength and integrity of that structure. And, and while the apostles, especially Peter and Paul, get the prominent ink, so to speak, in the narrative... Closer inspection identify many more characters, regular people, that without them, there would arguably be no story. I don't either. Let me give you an example of what I mean. In the ninth chapter of Acts, we read about a woman whose description might be said for any number of people that, that we personally know of today. Please follow along as I, I read aloud, verses 36 through 43. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. Her life overflowed with good works and compassionate acts on behalf of those in need. About that time, though, she became ill so that, or she became so ill that she died. After they washed her body, they laid her in an upstairs room. Since Lida was near Joppa, when the disciples heard that Peter was there, they sent two people to Peter. They urged, please come right away. Peter went to them. Upon his arrival, he was taken to the upstairs room. All the widows stood beside him, crying as they showed the tunics and other clothing Dorcas made when she was alive. Peter sent everyone out of the room, then knelt and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, saw Peter, and sat up. He gave her his hand and raised her up. Then he called God's holy people, including the widows, and presented her alive to them. The news spread throughout Joppa, and many put their faith in the Lord. Peter stayed for some time in Joppa with a certain tanner named Simon. My good friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, at at first blush, we may see this as a miraculous healing, a, a resurrection performed by Peter. And it is. But the author goes to substantial length telling us about Tabitha, or in Greek, Dorcas. We are told that her life overflowed with good works and compassion, compassionate acts on behalf of those in need. I ask... Do you know someone that you might describe as compassionate or overflowing with good works or working on behalf of people in need? I'll bet that most of you can. I'll also bet that there are others that might describe you that way. Anyway, it says that she made gifts of clothing for them out of compassion. In other words, she, she, she made an effort get, to, get, to get the people, or to get to know the people well enough to know what they liked, to, to know what size they wore, so that she could make them clothing that they could really appreciate. Know anybody like that? Just a regular person just doing what they do for regular folk? 
but in the process, making notable differences in their lives. And maybe it's not clothing. Maybe it's a, a plate of chocolate chip cookies or, or other baked goods. Or, or maybe it's a book that someone gave you because they thought that you'd really appreciate it. Or, or, or edging your lawn or shoveling your walkway in the winter when they did theirs. Regular folk doing what they see as regular things for others. Anyway, Tabitha becomes very ill, and she dies. And yes, Peter comes and and facilitates a, a wonderful miracle and brings her back to life, which is not to be minimized by any means. That is substantive, it, and it is wonderful, and it does demonstrate God's most amazing love in action. But what do you think Tabitha, or Dorcas, did with her life following her healing? I think she went back to doing exactly what she was doing before. A regular person spending time with other people doing good things for other people, doing compassionate acts on behalf of those in need, living a life reflecting the presence of Christ. But I think the real kicker is in the last two verses I read. The news spread throughout Joppa, and many put their faith in the Lord, and Peter stayed for some time in Joppa. In other words, at the end of the day, Christ's church grew. And we know that because Jesus or because um, Peter stayed there to continue his work. Now, thing is, it was Tabitha that made this such a story, especially knowing that the kind of person that Tabitha was. In fact, I submit that, that everything that we see the apostles doing that led to, to building Christ's church in the world always involved other folk, and usually regular folk. And that's what the church is. It's all us regular folk coming together in community to learn, to grow, to be transformed into our better selves, to become more Christ-like in how we live our lives. And, and this is important, to witness the importance of having Christ in our lives to other regular folk. That, that they might know Christ as well. That they might be a part of growing Christ's church also. In other words, the church is all the saints expanding Christ's presence in the world. This is church. You got Barnabas, Stephen, Rhoda, Priscilla, Aquila. Names of some of the, the other folk that are, that are also mentioned in Acts. Non-apostles, but who played critical roles in building the early church. People just doing what they would consider as their regular things. Albeit, things because of their love for God. People like you and me who are critical for for building Christ's church today, playing critical roles in demonstrating who Christ is by our actions, our words, our love, witnessing to the power of the gospel, to Christ's good news in our own lives. Will one of us ever physically resurrect a dead body back to life? like Peter did? Well, maybe not. But we each can bring new life to a struggling soul 
to someone who is searching for real good news. Good news that has the power to bring people into nurturing communities. Good news that heals. Good news that creates new friendships. And we, my friends, are the ordinary, regular folk who God calls to share and witness that good news. That others as well may experience newfound wholeness through worship. That they may learn to walk in the light of God's forgiveness. That they may encounter God in times of suffering. All the while, nudging the world towards alignment with with God's intentions for humanity's well-being. And living actively into God's call of us, of expanding the realized presence of God in the world. Together, all of us, all the saints. May it be so. Amen? Amen.